Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Secrets for an Inspirational Life. How are you all today? I hope that wherever you are, there is some beauty and some loveliness holding your hand. And I have to say, I was thinking about memories today. You know how we do. We often remember the bad times. Unfortunately, they are there for all of us. And we tend to not really focus on the good. But I think it's important to take it all in its absolute circle of life moment because everything that we do has the sweetness and the bitterness. And if we didn't know the bitterness, we wouldn't know the sweetness. And memories is something that we create every day. That in fact, at the end of life, it is memories that we have. It is all that we have. And it is the love that we have shared with people and those moments of joy that we've stood by people and with people that help us live a life that is really worthwhile. So never, ever miss an opportunity to make a memory, to do something beautiful with somebody. That is really important. And I have a friend who emigrated to Australia and she said to me, you know what, Mimi, it doesn't matter even if it's five minutes of something that makes your heart happy with somebody, don't miss the chance. And that's what I would say to all of you out there. Don't miss the chance to do something beautiful with somebody. Now, I am delighted to welcome my guest today. And that is the rather interesting and very knowledgeable Sam Neffendorf. Sam is an EFT trainer and matrix re-imprinting practitioner. Yes, it sounds very amazing. He does other things, but he will tell you about it later. His job is to break people out of the lifelong behavior patterns and beliefs that are keeping them sick and stuck. He inspires people to stand up for themselves, reach new levels of health, and realize their potential to have an amazing life. Tapping and energy psychology techniques enabled him to escape from corporate life into doing something he loves and most importantly, to become a dad naturally twice after being told that this would be very difficult by his GP. Sam specializes in guiding people with chronic, physical, and mental conditions to understand the precise root cause of their illness and then to learn how to heal themselves. Sam now spends much of the year living in Spain with his family and hosting retreats as well as working online with people worldwide, both individually and in groups. Today, he shares his wonderful story. Welcome, dear Sam. Hi, thanks very much for inviting me. It's uh, lovely to be here with you. Oh, you're very welcome. Now you are in where? Sunny Spain, Sam? Uh, yes, I am. I'm in um, southern Spain uh, near Granada. Oh, wow. What a beautiful country. A country of my heart. How are you today, Sam? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, it's lovely and warm here, as you'd, as you'd expect at this time of year. And yeah, it's just been, a, yeah, been a nice day. I've um, worked with a few people and spent some time outdoors. Yeah, it's been a, been a good day. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Sam, and um, where this incredible journey, because you do so many things, so many things. Um, but let's start at the beginning. Where did you begin this quest of yours? Okay, so, yeah, I, I was, was always interested in the unusual alternative side of life um, and questioning uh, the way that uh, we are sort of taught that things work in the world. And in spite of that, I ended up 
uh, after you know, leaving a really great time at um, university, um, then just ending up doing the get a job thing and uh, ended up with, without really any knowledge of what I was going to do, ended up in financial services, um, initially just doing very basic work and ultimately ending up as a financial advisor and co-owner of a financial planning firm. Um, and all the way through it, I felt very out of alignment with it. I just didn't really know what that meant at the time. I knew I wasn't happy with what I was doing. And even when I, you know, I went traveling for two years in the middle of that and thought I was going to get hit by this bolt of inspiration as to what I was going to do with my life. And in the end, I came back from that, I'd learned some great things, had some great experiences, and then uh, got back into, got sort of um, pulled back into the financial services world for another few years. Now, during, towards the end of that, um, I was, yeah, my, my wife and I, um, yeah, we wanted to um, have children. And after trying for a while, uh, I went and got um, fertility tested, expecting, of course, everything would be fine. And I was hit with the news that I wasn't going to be able to become a dad naturally. It would be almost impossible without, um, well, not impossible for it to happen, but it would have to be using a process called ICSI, which is similar to IVF, but more invasive. Mm. Um, and so that hit me pretty hard. And then over, um, after, after a few days, I started looking into, uh, more seriously into alternative health and then started yeah, having some treatments um, for that. Uh, which I, I had acupuncture and Chinese herbs, which um, was a three-month uh, treatment plan during which I was looking into all sorts of other things as well. And after three months, although the original problem that was um, I was told that I'd had by the doctor still remained, according to their tests, everything else had been boosted so far that um, they said there's no longer any problem anymore. And I wish I had those test results, but they're left somewhere in a, a doctor's um, in Bristol or somewhere like that. Um, and uh, But then one month later, uh, my son was conceived and he's 10 now. So that was really amazing. Um, wow. Yeah. Just, That's a miracle. Yeah, it was was absolutely fantastic. And, and we've got a daughter as well who's four uh now so it wasn't a fluke and How beautiful is that <laughs> yeah magic mm. total magic and it's, it's actually an area where um i've had yeah a few of my clients have had similar sorts of wonderful successes where they've worked with me for a bit and then you know one month afterwards also became pregnant so it seems to have a fractal effect which is a uh, really amazing nice. That's lovely to hear. Yeah. So that's so that's a sort of a big part of my story and why I became so interested in health and mm. the ability that, you know, you can actually, there's there's many ways to heal. Um and the other the other aspect was that I was, yeah, really not loving the corporate life at all. Um, even though I was a co-owner of um a company which was absolutely nothing wrong with it, it just wasn't didn't make my heart sing in any way and as um you know during the time before my son was born I started at first I was really keen to learn acupuncture because of the success that I'd had but then through um looking into acupuncture and I know I found out about EFT and which is a tapping technique which also uses acupuncture points in a more psychological way with people and I realized that it was more in alignment with who how I will work because I was already the way we worked in our financial planning practice we were already doing some financial coaching or moving into it so I was able to um, take some of the skills that I already had combined with EFT and yeah then quickly put myself forward into this um, new role effectively where 
I set up a, um, I learned EFT, I learned this um, technique called matrix re-imprinting, um, qualified as a practitioner, and I was able to use that to, um, yeah, leave and set up this uh, practice doing something that I really loved, um, while also making sure that uh, everything went well with um, leaving the financial planning practice. Now, for people out there that don't know, Sam, although we've had an emotional freedom technique, that's the actual official name, isn't it? Yeah, emotional freedom technique. Yeah, we've had actually a lady, um, a guest earlier on in the podcast um, who does it. But for people who don't know, tell us a little bit about the technique of that and also this fantastic sounding matrix re-imprinting. Yeah. What is that all about? Okay, so EFT is, you could call it psychological acupressure. So it combines um, the old knowledge of the meridian system and tapping very lightly with your fingers on these acupuncture points, um, which where, so rather than having needles put into them, there's a simple round of tapping on a series of acupuncture points while focusing specifically on something that you either something that you want to change in your life or something that's making you feel bad or somewhere that you feel stuck in life and especially how you feel about it so the emotions that are connected to your um, sense of um, fear of something or stress around money or um, physical health symptoms physical pain and through tapping and focusing on the emotions, strange though it would seem, um, you really very quickly feel, at first you feel yourself sort of tune in to the emotions and you feel them more strongly in your body and then you feel them release out of your body. So for day-to-day -day management or um, shifting of sort of emo unhelpful emotions that you might be feeling, um, it, it's not like you're pushing them down or anything like that. You feel them, you experience them fully, and then you release them. But that's one way it works. Um, and you can then use it to go even deeper into, so you can use the feelings that you've got at the time about whatever your perceived problem is to leapfrog back in time and find the memories which are related to that same emotion. So let's say you have a feeling and a belief of not being worthy of love or something like that, then you might um, find memories of things happening in your young younger life or in your childhood, um, which all confirmed that belief to you in your child state. And then with the EFT, you can actually tap on how you feel about the memory and the memories end up as a story. So they're not, they, they no longer have this emotional charge when you think back to them. Even very painful memories can just feel um, kind of more detached from you and um, not that you forget them, but you just see them as stepping stones in your life rather than something that's still affecting you now. And that changes the beliefs as well. Um, often the solutions just come in naturally because once you've cleared these uncomfortable i don't want to call them negative emotions because all emotions have value but they're uncomfortable or difficult emotional perspectives on things then it opens space in your um in your emotional system uh in your beliefs for solutions to naturally come through so that's beautiful in its own right that's the emotional freedom techniques uh, matrix re-imprinting is a, a process that was created by Carl Dawson, who is one of the founding EFT masters, and it's a it's still using the same tapping techniques, and you go deeper with it uh, through instead of looking at the old memories and. Um, sort of like watching them from the outside and then tapping to release the emotional charge, you have the experience of going into the memory as your current self to help your younger self to deal with it in a different way. 
Uh, it's you actually feel like you're there. You you um, feel like you're there with them. You help them. You don't change it or pretend what happened didn't happen, but you actually help them to see how they could perceive what happened as not meaning what it meant to them. So they can see, oh, actually, um, yeah, mum just looked at me funny because she was having a bad day. It wasn't that she didn't love me or, um, yeah, or, or that, you know, if there was something dangerous that happened and they were blaming themselves for it, it can, they can get a perspective of actually how, you know, it wasn't their fault, but there was nothing they could do. Um, they hadn't brought it on themselves for any um, sense of um, anything that's giving them guilt or shame about it, whatever. So obviously a million different things that can happen in the memories, but you're helping the younger self to see things differently, um, understand it in some way. And then you re you, the re-imprinting is you actually imprint the new understandings and the emotions um, of the younger self feeling much better about things uh, into their body um, and into their mind um, with a process that connects to all the cells. It's very cosmic at the time. Um, and that leaves very profound effects of powerful belief shifts, people taking different actions than they would have taken before, attracting different circumstances into their lives, approaching relationships differently. So much good stuff from it. Now, to make it, it all sounds incredibly intelligent. Mm. And just so that I can understand it also, and for people out there, are you able to give an example so that if people want to contact you and are interested in this, at least it sort of deciphers it a little bit, making it simple. I mean, is there something, Sam, that you can do now to give an example? You can use me as the guinea pig, um, but just something simple, like, for example, I'm afraid of big dogs. That's okay. The truth. That's the truth, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, so if I came to you and I said, listen, Sam, little dogs are fine because mm. they're like boys. It's yeah. the big ones um, that I have an issue with. Okay. So how would you, just so that people out there understand and are familiar with it, how would you then um, deal with me? So, so I'll just ask the questions as if we're having a session. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you then, um, if you tap, do you know the tapping points? Yes, but you can just for the people out there, just so that they um, can maybe try it as well. Yeah, um, maybe well, it's, it's not not really great to just tap along with it straight away, but they, they can hear you doing it. Okay. See, yeah, because um, in case it can, it can, the reason is it can bring powerful emotional states up, which people aren't expecting. So you can That's find them. Know. That's good to know. Okay. You can find them on a video on YouTube. Okay. Um, certainly on my website, there's a, I, I can give um, a free course for people so they can learn the basics and how to do yes, it. Yes, where can they go? Let's. We usually do this at the end. Yeah. But seeing as this is relevant, where can they find that with you? Um, so, yeah, so it's uh, eftnow.co.uk and yeah then there, there is a opportunity to download um to download that on there okay that's important to know i think that on was good that, yeah. yeah okay all right let's begin let's begin okay right so um if you just just tap the finger points or whichever tapping points feel right just because it will help us to tune into the energy and mm -hmm. army tapping as well. And so, yeah, so big dogs. So you've got this feeling, you've got this fear of big dogs, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, so just imagine, I mean, how bad is this fear? If, if I asked you to imagine a big dog, would you feel scared? Yeah, I'm nervous now, yeah. Okay, where do you feel that nervousness in your body? In my legs. In your legs. Okay, can you describe the sensation in your legs? Yeah, I want to run. I want to run. Okay, and what colour is that energy, if it's got a colour? Um, black. Black. Okay, so black, want to run energy in the legs. And how intense is that energy out of 10? When I think about the dog? Yeah. Yeah, it's on a 10 out of 10. 
Okay, so black, nervous, runaway energy in your legs. Mm-hmm. And just, just, just tap and connect to that energy for a moment. So just tapping around the tapping points with all of your attention on that black, nervous, wanting to run away energy in your legs. And just breathe into it and just notice if anything changes in it as you do that. Just allowing yourself to feel it. Well, it hasn't, it, it's no longer um, black. It now looks like a brown type of Doberman. Okay. And is the intensity released down from 10 at all? Yeah, it's down to a 9. Okay, so it's dropped down a little bit. Now, what I'd like to ask you is just connect to that feeling, that um, nervous running away energy in your legs. Mm -hmm. And just that feeling and just the first number that comes to mind, what age were you when you first felt that? Uh, Five. Five. Okay. Now, with your eyes open, do you have a memory from when you were five? Yeah, a big Alsatian. Um, I was in the car and Mm. my parents left me in the car because I didn't want to go out because I was scared of the dog. Yes. Um, In this pub garden that had beautiful peacocks. I was a bit cheesed off Mm. because I love peacocks and they left the window open. Yeah. And left me there in the car. Mm. And um, I could see the peacocks and I could see them. It was outside. It was summer. Um, yeah. And the dog jumped into the car. Right. Okay. What, emotion, what emotions do you feel now thinking of that memory? A bit like I want to scream out. Right. Okay. So just, just tap and breathe. Just, uh, yeah, just notice where you feel that sense of I want to scream out in your body. Yeah, okay. Just keep tapping and just connecting to that energy, allowing yourself to feel just enough of it to be able to tap on it. Okay. Okay. Just notice, where is where is that I want to scream out energy in your body? Um, it's moved from my legs to my arms. Moved from your legs to your arms. And how intense is it right now? A mm, five. Five. Okay, so what we're going to do is just to show how the matrix works. Mm-hmm. Um, what I'd like you to do is just imagine that you're seeing your five year old self in the car um, when that dog's jumping in. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel when you see your younger self there? How do you feel towards her? So you're you, she's her. I feel sorry for her. You feel sorry for her. And do you feel kindly disposed to her? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, because check that because sometimes people do feel some, um, they might feel some anger or disappointment towards No, I want to rescue her. Okay, great. All right, so what I'd like you to do is just imagine that you freeze the whole picture, accept your younger self, so she's still fully animated, Mm -hmm. still herself, and then just step into the picture as yourself now. So just imagine yourself stepping in. Mm-hmm. And just introduce yourself to your five-year-old self and let her know who you are and that you're here for her. And you can do that all in your head. You don't have to say it out loud. Okay. Okay, how does, how does she feel to see you? Uh, she's jumped into my arms. She's jumped into your arms, so she's happy to see you. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, great. So can you just now, what I'd like to do is um, ask her if you can tap on her fingers or tap on her tapping points. Let her know it will help her to feel better about what's happening. Okay. Is she all right with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just, yeah, so just tapping with her. And just ask her to tell you what she felt in that moment that the dog jumped through the window. She thought that the dog was going to kill her. She thought the dog was going to kill her. Okay, so yeah. just so you can just say now, just tap with her and just say, even though mm-hmm. you felt like the dog was going to kill you, yeah, I'm here with you now, mm-hmm. and you're going to be okay. 
Mm-hmm. I just want to just want to check with you. Did anything happen with the dog that was dangerous, or were you indeed? No, n- nothing. the The landlords continue to have the dog. Yeah, but did it, but did the, what I meant was did the dog do anything to you? No, no, no. So you were okay in the moment. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was just hysterically screaming. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So just keep tapping with her on that feeling of the fear that she had of the dog until you notice some form of shift happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what happened? So she said to me, are we going to grow up and be brave people? Mm -hmm. And I said, we did grow up to be brave people. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, really? And I said, yes, you will see. Yeah. Okay. How does she feel now? Happy. Happy. Okay. So what would be a good way for this to be resolved so she doesn't feel dangerous anymore? Could it be that the, the, uh, did someone just come and get the dog and take it out? or? What, yeah, what someone did in, yeah, someone to come and get the dog and take yeah. it out and close the window. Okay. Yeah. Right. So just... um. Just play that out because mm-hmm. that actually did happen, so it's not changing. Mm. And how does she feel about herself now? Ask her, see what she says. This is a strange thing. She said she's going to keep the windows locked when she drives the car. Okay, so she's still feeling a sense of fear of dogs at the mm-hmm. moment. Mm. Yeah, but she can see... Does she see that she was safe and she made it through this? Yeah. Okay. So what's, ask her what, um, her, how intense her fear of dogs is now. Is she still as scared or does it feel different in any way? She said that she wants to avoid big dogs still. She, she still to. doesn't, yeah, she still doesn't like them. Yeah. Um, but she's going to try to be braver. Right, okay. Now, you see, we could go on here. I don't yeah. know how much time you want me to, to do this for because we could go and find lots of memories of... But um, I get the gist. I get yeah. the gist, and I think it's important. It's a really interesting exercise, Sam, yeah. um, because I could actually, envisaging that dog, and I really wanted to do it because I do have a fear of big dogs, but... Yeah. Um, for people out there to see, um, there are so many layers to it, aren't there? Yeah, there could be there could be multiple multiple memories connected to one fear, um, and we could have gone a lot more with that memory. We could have made it. We, we could actually with phobias and things. We do change mm-hmm. it a bit. We can make things a bit more cartoony, um, less scary, mm-hmm. all sorts of different ways of um, shifting shifting the energy of it. But if you imagine, like, every time that you've ever been scared of a dog, every time that you've ever even thought about dogs and it's been scary, it's like a self-talk memory of, a self-talk fear memory happens. There could be thousands of those in your life. Yes, true, true. You don't, the good news is you don't have to clear all of them. You can you can just find a few key ones. So there might have been that one, which would probably the origin of the fear. I don't know if there'd been any earlier times in your life you were scared of big dogs. Perhaps there might have been as well. But if you, if you, generally, if you find um, around three very significant memories, then you can clear something like a phobia. Um, mm-hmm. other, other situations like financial blocks, um, chronic illnesses, things like that, it's more complex. There's, there's more patterns and themes to explore but still you know it's, it can still be very quick compared to conventional talk therapy it's interesting because what it made me see um and I was actually feeling that at the time I know exactly how I felt yeah. um how the dog was um and that it's it hindered me as a child a lot um sure with the dog situation because I would I would literally run across the road to get away mm. from a dog. Yeah. So um cars are more dangerous than dogs. Yeah, exactly. And and mm. I'm thinking now as I'm talking to you is that 
I suppose, I mean, you know about this, you're the expert in this um, EFT and matrix work, but I suppose, and this is the dog, but yeah. if there are deeper issues on mm -hmm. deeper levels, then it helps to sort of untangle it because in a way it's like a maze, uh, um, an entanglement. And how much of that then goes on to affect our life in so many different areas, isn't it? Totally. I mean, so we, we talk about beliefs and if you think of each isolated issue, perceived problem that you've got, so you might have anxiety, you might have specific fear of dogs, you might have relationships not working as you want them to, money issues, eczema, all these things, and they all seem like isolated things. And that's the conventional view that they're individual problems um, standing on their own, really. But they all, they then might have beliefs that they can then sort of link back um, to a common center where there might be a massive core belief um, I'm not good enough, the world's a dangerous place, something like that. And it can have all these different symptoms like branches that come off it and the good news is you could go in through any one of them um change and shift the core belief and then you are and, and that has can have an effect on all of the others as well the because it's i suppose it's like the knot in the chain once you yeah. undo the main knot then everything becomes easier but mm. what about when somebody comes to you sam and says i don't know what it is um i don't know relationships aren't working um i keep making the same patterns in my life over and over where would you begin with somebody um that comes to you with such an issue how how would you begin that uh, so so if, if if it was if it was relationship patterns mm. well i mean but i would begin just by um asking them to tell me what feelings came up in their body when they think about either the relationship they're in or the trail of relationships they've had there'd, it'd be some um conversation beforehand of course mm. but, but mm. the core of actually getting to the root of it um can be around yeah it can be as easy as just finding the emotion that they're feeling and then using that to leapfrog back in time to find the memories and it it seemed very simple when we just did it in that little demo but um you know did you feel that the that the emotion really took you back there oh absolutely i yeah. know it may have sound simple because obviously you and the listeners you as the therapist and then everybody out there is going to be listening to it in in another way and you as an expert in another way but me as sort of the client the patient so to speak mm. for me it was actually um very real it was yeah. very very real and i wonder it made me wonder actually is how much of this sort of memory imprinting that we have is how we think we saw something and you know when you have a pain and you yeah. don't want to do something it's because it's the memory of the pain as opposed to it being the pain itself mm. so i wonder how much of that on an emotional level uh people don't want to meet other people or get involved in making their life better because they're stuck in these old patterns yeah well, there's, there's a lot to say about that. So the, the um, patterns are comfortable, of course. It's a well-worn groove. And mm. doing something to get out of it um, does require some, um, some change, which even if you do some inner work, it's still changing things, takes, can take some action. And that can, at first, it's uncomfortable. But once you create it as a habit, it becomes super comfortable to... Uh, make that new change and it's just taking a few steps and clearing the beliefs about the pattern and how it how it has affected you can be really valuable in that um the other thing about memories is as soon as something becomes a memory it's no longer what actually happened it's um we especially if it's a 
it, they're always colored by the emotions that you were feeling at the time. And if you were feeling like traumatized, then of course your body's gone into fight, flight, freeze, fawn type responses. And so you're immediately perceiving things as more dangerous than they actually were. It's not to say people don't have danger and difficult things in their life. It's just that their the survival response makes it seem worse than it was with the obvious intention to ideally get you out of the situation. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and something that came to my mind, Sam, is that I remember talking to a friend of mine a few years ago and we'd been on this trip somewhere. I don't know where it was, in what country. And she said to me, do you remember you did this and you did that and we did this and we did that? And I said, well, I don't remember it like that. I said, yeah, don't you remember? And you did that and you made me feel like this. And then we did that. And I thought, this is completely different to how I remember it. Yeah, and, absolutely. And it was, it's so strange because at that moment I thought, my goodness, you know, you know that saying as we see things um, as we are, as opposed to as they are, it was a, yes. the famous right. saying. I don't know if it was uh, who it's who said that, but I really Abraham Lincoln that. or someone on, on Facebook. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. And I thought, my goodness, how much of our life is really like that? As in, hmm. that's where the miscommunication between people happens because we are actually not meeting people where they are. Mm. We're actually meeting them where we are, where we would like them to be possibly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's really, yeah, key to see that when, yeah, looking at relationships of, of all kinds, um, the filters mm. that we're applying to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I think it's an interesting work and it's, really admirable what you're doing because it's helping people shift it's a huge shift though and I suppose do you meet with a lot of resistance from people not I mean the people who I'm, I'm sure that not you know not everyone in is going to be ready for or want this sort of approach mm -hmm. um but yeah um, people who come to me um, generally really want this and it's often happening that they've tried all sorts of right. uh, conventional things before and uh, EFT used to be really well known as the thing which people did last after they tried everything else and then it worked uh, now it's not it's not quite like that anymore because it's I think it's now the second most popular self-help technique in the world after mindfulness so it's very well known. And so people are coming to it more quickly. Um, and, and of course, people do try and use their rational head to deal with what's going on. They try and think through things and, and logic it out. But the subconscious mind doesn't work with logic. Um, it's only um, it's the programming of the subconscious mind is, is automated and it's to keep you safe. It doesn't really it's not logical the way it works it doesn't um, even differentiate between other people and you necessarily so it's so we're, you know thing, that's where we get this whole concept that um, we project um, stuff that's inter internally to us onto other people and then um, experience it as if as if it's happening to us which you know it's not to say that but there aren't but other people aren't doing things of course it's just how we filter it as well. Um, so, yeah, so I've got a little bit lost here in this, in this explanation, but yeah, it's. No, I understand. I understand what you're trying to say, um, yeah. because a lot of it is we're reflecting, aren't we? We reflect, yeah. we're all reflecting each other. Yes. And, um, you know, we're all mirrors for each other. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and we also, we also attract and create and look for proof of our beliefs in the situations and people and events that we encounter. So um, we make meaning of whatever happens, like 10 people can have the same experience and get a totally different outcome from it based on yeah, the parts of it they remember and also the beliefs that it 
created or reinforced for them. Right, right, right. Now, I wanted to ask you something. This, you say that you help people break out of the lifelong behaviour patterns that are keeping them sick and stuck. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that, because what I'm seeing Mm. out there, Sam, is that people want to change more than ever, but they don't know how to do it. I mean, you're right that people, this this last few years with everything that's gone on, has mm. been, it's like almost been like a collective dark night of the soul for many, many people. And lots of people had yeah. have had the, you can, you can say that looking at it, they, they actually had a benefit of realising that they want to change things in their life. But it's, yeah, then how to do it is the, um, question and and what I generally do with people that um, are looking to change something is actually find out uh, what it is that they believe that they want and people normally then come with a an outcome goal like they want to um, leave their job or they want to um, make more money or have this have a new relationship or get a new sports car or whatever it is, um, yeah. and those those outcome goals aren't actually what they want. What they want is to um, change something within them, and they just haven't realised that yet. So they 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 what they're actually looking to do is um, sort of shift um, the way that they approach life and change behaviours instead of um, always looking for outcomes. So then what you do is you look at what the behaviours are that would be required to actually move towards feeling how you believe that that outcome would enable you to feel and then start working on whatever the blocks to living those behaviours are. So if someone if someone um, wanted to meet a um, wonderful new partner or something like that, mm-hmm. but they're not going either whatever many ways people can meet partners these days if they're not actually carrying out the behaviors to enable that then it won't happen so it's then finding what the behaviors are it might be yeah if it's um socializing at parties or or it could be doing online dating or whatever it is and then find the blocks to that so when they think about that taking that action what are the fears, what are the limitations, what's holding them back there? And then you can use that energy to find the um, the old stories from their past, so the old memories which are holding them back. And also, um, you can also work with EFT and Matrix when printing on, in a slightly different way, on fears of the future. So imagining the future and then clearing the um, all the fears, anxieties, stress around around all of that as well. Mm. So so yeah, under, like yeah, actually looking at the what they what the behaviour is that they desire to create in their life, and then clearing the blocks from it. Um, yeah, it, it sounds simple. It can take some time, but it's it can can be um, can also be very quick. Now, something that I loved, which I mentioned to you earlier, that. Mm. And I have, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. And it's your words. Okay. Um, is Sam has this sort of tagline in a way that really drew me to it. And, um, and it says this, helping people with chronic health conditions to realize the precise root cause of their illness, heal themselves and avoid years of suffering and wasting thousands of dollars or pounds on trying to every cure under the sun. That is a big statement. Yes. How did you come about um, putting that so eloquently in a paragraph? um, And how do you do it? Because this is the one thing Sam and I spoke about earlier, is Mm. that a lot of people out there 
seem to offer quick fixes. And especially um, the therapy industry, because it is an industry, of course, um, if you pay this amount and this amount, and if you do 10 of these, it's going to definitely work. And then people become disappointed. They become skint with no money. um, And they're still in the same position. So tell me something about this statement, because it's very powerful, Sam. Yeah, there's there's a lot in that. And the I guess um it's so there's of course there's multiple different ways that people can heal from symptoms that they're experiencing. And some of those ways work for some people and some of them don't. And people that have, let's say someone has used something like cannabis oil to heal themselves from symptoms of whatever symptoms it is um certain cancers or epileptic seizures or things like that they then become um they become really excited about that that's happened for them understandably and so they might become um really vocal about that and start saying it works this is work for me and then sharing the information um but it might not work for everybody because we're all unique and we've all, um, although that, you know, we've, we've all got this capacity to heal ourselves. Actually all healing is self healing. Um, and the looking for a cure outside is a, is a bit of a non-starter because uh, it's always only going to be a symptom treatment, not actually something that's deeply resolving whatever symptoms are happening. So what you need to do is um, get to the real root cause of what's going on. And that means actually understanding um, why the body is um, creating um, specific symptoms, why they're happening. Um, Conventional um, um, ideas around this, of course, are that it's that symptoms are being um, created by lifestyle uh by um germs um by accidents and yeah and there there is an understanding of that stress causes some symptoms as well it still comes from a place that something's gone wrong in the body when symptoms happen and from the perspective i work from uh which is meta consciousness um which is a framework um where we use um, all of the understandings from something called German New Medicine. Uh, it's the body is What's actually that? German What's New that? Medicine is a um, yeah. Well, basically, it's it's a framework that was um, founded um, since the 1980s by um, someone called Dr. Hammer, uh, where um, it's very in depth um, and uh, very well researched. And he was able to show that um, symptoms are intelligent adaptations by a body that um, is actually trying to carry out specific biological uh, responses, um, which have been um, been around forever in um, in all organisms, um, as they became, and starting from the most basic organisms up to the most advanced, um, they've all got similar um similar responses as survival um strategies now these survival strategies made sense um in um sort of prehistoric times or if if we were living in nature but we're not natural animals anymore we've been domesticated um we don't live in the wild but our biology hasn't caught up so uh things that happen to us now um for example your your people someone who um is working in a in an office might have a similar response as far as their body and their energy and the thoughts that they have if their boss walks into the room as um one of their ancient ancestors might have had if a saber-toothed tiger came in Um, But the trouble is you can't run away screaming every time your um, boss walks into the room. It doesn't do too well for your job prospects. So so we tend to get stuck in 
um, biological responses and to the point that they can actually, um, yeah, we can, they can become chronic and actually we can end up in either with these situations being permanent in our lives or, or looping through them. Um, so should I give some examples? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So two examples um, of how it, of which, which makes sense to most people are, well, first of all, if, if you look at what's happening with eczema, um, eczema is happening on the skin. Uh, it's happening on the outer layer of skin called the epidermis. And it's part of a um, separation conflict. So people who've experienced a separation conflict, which can either be that they are feeling um, feeling separate from something or someone that they don't want to be separate from, or, um, yeah, or that they want to be separate from something but they can't be, then that can um, set off this response in the skin where at first what happens um, when they're stressed uh, by the separation, um, and this is all unconscious, they're not necessarily thinking this, of course, but yeah. they their skin goes thinner, it goes dry, um, and they, they might be obsessively thinking about whatever they're separate from, whether it's that they're separate from, um, they, they might have had to move move away from a place that they loved, or they might have um, might be separate separated from um, their family or a friend or whatever. Um, but then once there's once it's actually resolved, um, this is another interesting part of it. Often the symptoms people have don't happen as a result of the stressful thing. They happen as they are actually the healing of the body as um, after some form of acceptance or reversal of the initial stress. So they, let's say they um, actually um, became reconnected again with um, the family that they'd been separated from, then at that point is where they would actually get the skin swelling up, um, getting the red bumps or whatever, whatever the eczema symptoms are for them. And then the different um, parts of the body um, would um, indicate something that's a bit more of a specific meaning. So, for example, like if it is on the hand, it could be that they felt that they weren't able to um, like hold on to someone um, in order to stop feeling uh, separate from them. Um, if it was... Um, things like the soles of the feet can be like feeling um, not connected to reality. So feeling a separation from, from the earth, for example, those kinds of things. Um, mm. So it can be quite metaphorical, but it is, it is metaphorical. Um, Cause, Cause as humans, we have this ability to make metaphors of situations that are happening to us. And so it can, so it can end up affecting your, yeah, body in different ways. So yeah, that's eczema. Um, the other one is um, musculoskeletal pain. Um, there's all sorts of symptoms which and um, diseases which have uh, musculoskeletal pain as symptoms. But this is, if you think about your um, your skeleton and your muscles, then this is your strength. It's your ability to do things in the world. It's your ability to affect the world um, and take action in the world. So uh, any anything which is like the universal limiting belief of I'm not good enough or um, I'm not strong enough or this is too much for me, but self-devaluation conflicts, um, actually they will affect the, um, yeah, musculoskeletal system. So, and they... Yeah, because again, it will start. You don't notice when the actual stressful event or theme of life happens, but it's the it's when um, after the after you've had this acceptance that's gone on, or um, yeah, and it can but acceptance can even be something really good, like oh yeah, I've um, I've resolved that, um, and I feel good about that now, or it can be more like a resigned acceptance where like in the classic one with um 
musculoskeletal pain might be, oh, yeah, I just got to put up with this. I'm never going to be able to escape from this situation or something like that. And then that after the accept after that acceptance point, the pain starts. Now, if it was a full acceptance, which has resolved the initial stress, then mm. the pain will go. How do you mean? So, how, what's the difference between the two? So, so if if you um, if if there was, um, let's say that it was, um, yeah, something like a, a sporting event or something like that. Mm-hmm. And someone had, was really obsessed um, with um, with winning, and then uh, they they won a sporting event, um, and they they'd been feeling that they were never going to achieve it, that, but they weren't good enough. They'd always been defeated before that, and then they won. Then it could manifest as musculoskeletal pain, which would be which would go because they've had a resolution, they've completed, um, they no longer have the belief that they're, they're not going to achieve. But if it's for something to uh, remain chronic and be, um, it keeps, keeps happening over and over again, then it might be, um, one that I've seen is um, someone with um, chronic back pain um, stuck in what they thought was a dead end job. Um, and their belief was that I'm never gonna be good enough to leave this job. And then they um, they go for things like interviews and stuff like that, and keep not getting the job. And then they so they have um, and when they have the interviews or when they feel um, like they're doing something about the situation, that's um, they don't really experience the pain. But when they have when when they then have the sort of resigned acceptance, so I'm never going to be able to leave this job or something along those lines, then the pain comes back. So they to get this sense sort of ongoing, um, yeah, ever increasing um, pain, which which comes and goes. Does that make sense? It's quite yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. And oh, yeah. yeah. And also, yeah. I think Sam that um, it doesn't have to be directly when the event is happening. It can be years later of unresolved issues that can come up um, as whatever ailment, whether that be musculoskeletal, whether that be eczema, whether that be asthma, whatever it is. I think there's a lot of repression also that goes on within us humans that um, sometimes I think the soul has to be ready, doesn't it, to want to actually break free from this lifetime of struggling. Yeah, absolutely. And just talking about the soul, you can even find that this stuff goes into ancestral patterns. So yeah. stuff that happened to your parents or generations before them can come through as symptoms for you. And we can find those things. It can, and it can be some people go into past lives. Uh, a lot of stuff is things that happened in the womb um, or, yeah, even like very early on, like preconception or whatever. Um, it can still be so a lot of things can have their root cause at a very early age and then something happens later on in life which isn't the original shock which is very early on but it re-triggers it it's like a reminder same emotions similar sort of um, content in the event to um, whatever was happening when they were very young or or even um, pre that and then it can actually uh, trigger the um, yeah, the healing response happening. And the yes, healing interesting. Symptoms. Very. And um, I don't know whether you've heard of this, but um, there is a therapy of when people are in the womb. Um, I know people that have had this, that they are I'll taken back. Have you heard of this? There's quite a few, but I've, I've got a, pro, a one that I use. Yeah, what, what's the one you're... Um, have you? Well, I can't remember the name. And um, it was quite a few years ago, but I remember a friend of mine actually um, who's Spanish and she had it, Mm. um, this therapy, and it was very powerful because she was actually, she went to see her mother after that and was repeating things that had gone on in the family that she could never have known. Mm. But they were memories of what was going on while she was in the womb. Yeah, it's amazing um, when you work with people that are in the womb 
um because babies are picking up everything that's going yeah. on outside yeah. of them um they don't have the context for it so but if you imagine a baby is picking up um the all of the emotions that the mother is feeling um is coming through um yeah in the hormones coming through um via the umbilical yeah. cord yeah. but not they don't have the full context of what's going on but they mm. are still picking some of it up as well so yeah super interesting it is and the fact that while we are all while we have all been in the womb yeah one begins to question how much of that as adults have we actually contain within ourselves and we think mm. they are our issues when in fact it has nothing to do with us it's just trying to sort of distance yourself and to say actually this is from my ancestors like you say because yeah. this is the pattern that was repeating itself over and over and it's genetics is a it's a big thing yeah. um this actually doesn't belong to me and um i know that some people say after the seventh generation usually the person that comes to be the healer is the person who's strong enough to break those generational curses or whatever you want to call them but they come to resolve that totally yeah um, i don't Do know if it's always seven i don't know if it's always seven generations but um it's uh I it know might not that. be i mean yeah, i've that. heard all sorts of things but yeah. um, do you believe in that sam yeah i think that we um i think that if you are the one that chooses to um shift and change these patterns that have been running in your life and also you can see them back through your family as well then yeah the, the beautiful thing about that is that it then means that it's not going to continue on to the next generation so yeah. it's it's breaking a spell effectively um they would have called them curses in the old days yeah 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 absolutely and i have a friend who's a, who does this especially this work with ancient traditions and ancient healings mm. and he said to me that he feels that 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 is his role that is what he is meant to do and i want to ask you is that something that you feel um within your family do you feel this calling um you know for a greater purpose in a way i, I find it very meaningful um what i do and yeah it's it was um yeah it was beautiful as it's evolved and i feel it's a really still evolving journey which i'm so which is yeah continuing continuing to unfold and um purpose is getting more and more beautiful and you know an, another area that i'm really interested in is you know creating conscious communities so that you have whole areas of people and communities of people all living uh with more awareness um having resolved their own staff and then that having a ripple effect on everyone around them and yeah really creating more sort of freedom um and yeah connection with love um spirituality whatever whatever that means to the individual and all all the good stuff which you know many of us how many of us want to live our lives now yeah i think that's important um yeah. now to gather this community of people that are like minded and want to follow their life calling because everybody mm. has i believe their life's calling and their life's vocation and our time on earth is either spent frivolously or actively trying to pursue that and to attain to that consciousness but right. or a wonderful combination of frivolously and actively yes absolutely why not indeed yeah. and um you imagine dancing around the fire and um mm. you know playing your guitar or whatever but i think it's important now for people like yourself um sam to stand up and to gather the people because they're everywhere yeah um around the world they're shining lights around the world and some people don't want to and that's absolutely fine because some people want to be 
just passengers on the train. Yeah. Um, and that's fine because that's where every person has their own individual destiny and their journey. But I think now to educate people as well, and I think by what you're doing is, you know, where you're saying to learn how to heal, you know, people to heal themselves in effect. Um, yeah. That's the important thing, isn't it? In order to set them free. Yeah, I think, and it is. It's really important that it is healing. We've got this um, innate, um, sort of divinely given ability to heal ourselves. You know, you're, when you cut yourself, scab forms, doesn't it? And that's just like yes. That is, then that's happening. Like you can see many symptoms, even if they're happening internally, things that people are scared of is actually that sort of thing happening. It's it's a, it's the healing that's happening. Um, but yeah, so the, the self healing is really key, and um, so I I think it's really important that pe- if people are doing this, that they see themselves as a guide to other people's healing rather than the one that's doing the healing. Yeah, because you're actually shining the light mm. to show people the way. You're not walking the way no. um, for them. You it's can't do way. that, um, but you can remind them of something that they had forgotten. And I think that's so incredibly important um, to be a facilitator of this type of healing where, in fact, you're reminding people how to heal. Mm, That's right. I think it's a wonderful job, actually. It's not even a job, is it? It's, um, It's a fabulously good time. Yeah, it is. Um, It's beautiful seeing, like, yeah, working with people and, yeah, seeing just how, like, even people who've been through incredibly hard times, just, just how strong they can be and how much beauty and uh, connection they can still have and how they, how they, yeah, moving through their healing process and car- like carrying out that generational healing as well. Um, so they are having that impact back through their their lineage or out into the world in a ripple effect is yeah it's really wonderful to see it and be part of it it is it as you say is truly beautiful because to you know take away the clips of someone's wings and Mm -hmm. see them fly I think it's a magnificent thing and you have this feeling of awe and humbleness I think in that moment because you realize you're just part of a huge divine picture that unfolds yeah absolutely it's wonderful wonderful it's Mm. been an absolute pleasure I have to say and my goodness I've learned things yeah wow yeah it's been wonderful thank you uh so much for inviting me and yeah, we could we could talk forever, I'm sure. Yeah, we could for sure. And and I could definitely talk to you about lots of things and big mm. dogs and all sorts of things. Um, and big slugs as well, because yeah. I'm not a fan of them. Um, yeah. but I think when we open ourselves to show our humanity with people, um, we realize how fragile we all are. And I think it's in that that the love can shine through between mm. us all. Yeah. Amazing. Now, Sam. Yes. One, um, firstly, before before we end, um, something, a paragraph. I ask my guests this um, always because they're so wise and wonderful, I have to say. And they teach about so many things about life to me that I mm. haven't known before. Um, in a paragraph, really, something that's inspired you, um, through life to keep going so when it's difficult um what keeps you going what's that something that inspires you so it's quite um simple for me is that it's and it's that your happiness isn't something that's found through outside of you it is actually the place to begin with when you are um so it's it's created from within you 
so that no matter you know when even if you are experiencing tough things or going through tough times you can see that those um can be temporary and actually the you can create this um sense of happiness within yourself which can really uh carry you through that um in many situations now sometimes you can really feel very disconnected from that of course if things are very tough at the time but it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to reconnect to it in the future so it's just remembering that you can sort of shine out rather than have life created at you oh that makes sense to keep shining yeah it's just that, that you you can create your experience of reality from within rather than be made by what's going on outside you i love that i think that's wonderful i'm going to be thinking keep shining mm. that is beautiful thank you sam now where can people find out about your work i know we mentioned it before but let's mention it again yeah so it's um it's eftnow.co.uk is my website um and yeah they can also um find on my actually i put a lot of things just on my personal page on facebook which is sam neffendorf um so and then there's various groups and things i run from there as well that they can they can check out so but yeah, okay so you're happy for people to okay so you're happy for people to um contact you and you do one-to-one -one work you do zoom uh you run retreats and workshops so you do a whole array of things yeah and um if if people sign up for anything on my website then they'll end up on a mailing list um and receive whatever information of what i'm doing um and what's available uh, and if people, in particular, people who are struggling with chronic health conditions um, or sim symptoms, psychological or physical health symptoms of any kind, uh, can book a um, consultation with me. There's a form on my site and it's, uh, yeah, you can get 30 minutes um, just to uh, discuss it and see whether it would be a good fit for me to be able to support them in healing themselves. That's wonderful, actually. That's a good way for people to see because you've got to be able to get on with yeah. your therapist in any case. Um, there has to be some sort of a uh, synchronicity in energies. Wonderful. Thank you again, Sam. It's really been a pleasure to have you on today. And I wish you all the very best. And please do come back again. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been yeah, so pleased that you reached out to me to come on here. And yeah, it was been lovely speaking with you. So uh, thanks and lots of success. <laughs> oh, thank you. And um, send my regards to beautiful Spain. Will do. Oh, take care. Bye. Lots of love. Bye. 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 Sam Nevendorf. What an interesting episode. My goodness. Well, I send you love and lots of good wishes until we meet again. Look after yourselves and take care. Thank you for listening to Secrets for an Inspirational Life, brought to you by your host, Mimi Novik. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and see you in the next episode. For more information about Mimi Novik and her books, music, and inspirational work, take a look at her website www.miminovic.co.uk